Hello and welcome to How to Write a Tax Efficient with, with me, Deborah Bowers. Today being the 10th of January 2004, we shall be discussing wills and lasting powers of attorney. Now I know that every new year, all of you decide, well, yes, I want to do better than last year, and yet you never quite get around to doing it. So this is the opportunity tonight to ensure that you can do better this year, it being the Roman year, and we shall take a look into writing a will, whether you need a will or a lasting power of attorney. Now, before we go any further, let me explain who I am. My name is Deborah Bowers. I am a STEP certified advanced will writer and a solicitor of England and Wales. I'm also a GDPR practitioner and the author of this lovely book here, How to Write a Tax Efficient Will. In this book, I explain to you all the things you need to look out for when you're thinking about writing your will so that you can avoid, if possible, paying 40% inheritance tax. Go any further, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not even a legal advisor, and this is not ad investment advice either. You should seek those from persons who are able to provide it. What are the benefits of writing a will? Firstly, you save yourself taxes if you understand the rules before you write the will. And your wishes regarding your assets are clear and because you have set them out in your will. And your decisions are legally binding on whoever you are appointed as executors or executors of your will. You have also taken the step to plan for your future, so that's excellent. And you've given your family peace of mind in that you have determined how things should be set out when you are no longer here. This gives a family certainty as well. So some people say to me, should I write a will when I'm about to pass away at the very point of death? Or should I write it in advance? And I'll tell you why you should write your will early. It is a good idea to create a will well before you find yourself in a critical health situation or at the point of your death. None of us know the day of our death, and so it is advisable to ensure that you have set your house in order, set things in order before you come to that point, because we don't know when that point is likely to be. A valid will also requires you to have mental capacity. You must know what you are doing. You must understand what you are doing. And whilst, for example, you are lying in a hospital bed, bedridden, you have been had an accident, you will not have the capacity that is required to write your will at that point. You may not have that. Because the will requires you to have an understanding of the decisions you are making and their effects. You must also have an intention to give legal effect to your will. So if you're sick, lying in bed, in a hospital bed, it's unlikely that you are able to think clearly enough um, have been, been there suffering from pain and other injuries, and to think clearly enough as to the decisions you are making, or even remembering people's names properly, how they are spelled, who they are, their relationship to you. And you must have an intention to give legal effect to your will. So the ability to execute your will is important, and so it is best to prepare it when your mind is clear, you have no ailments to think about. We now turn to having a lasting power of attorney. Some people don't quite understand what those are used for. And those who do understand sometimes believe that they lose authority, they lose power or control over their own assets, over their own affairs. And that's far from the truth. So let's take a look now. There are two forms of lasting powers of attorney, one for health and care decisions, and I'll show you what it looks like here on the form. This lasting power of attorney grants authority to a, another to care for you and make decisions when you are unable to care for yourself. 
So in this case, you must think carefully about someone who will always have your best interests at heart if you are ill or you are unable to look after yourself. And that applies to people who are young as well as old. Because someone who is sick in hospital is not able to make decisions for themselves if they're in a coma or if they have had an accident. So even though they're young or old, someone else can make those decisions for them in their best interests. Once that person who is ill is, a, is not a child, because if you are old enough to make decisions for yourself and you are ill, some an, another adult must be assigned that responsibility on your behalf. So this one is called for health and care decision once you have mental capacity. This form is quite easy to set up and of course you must pay a fee to the Office of the Public Guardian of 82 pounds. The other lasting power of attorney is financial decisions. You need to have appointed an attorney who is able to make financial decisions on your behalf. And doing this early just helps you think through all the people in your life who are able to consider your circumstances and put your best interests at heart, not run away with your funds. Att attend your, your bank or sell your property, your stocks, your shares, your house, to provide care for you. So this one is for financial decisions so they can do what needs to be done. You can also consider securing your copy of How to Write a Tax Efficient Will. The book is available on Amazon, How to Write a Tax Efficient Will, How to Outwit the Tax Man by Deborah Bowers. If you have any questions, I'm also happy to answer them. Just send me an email at deborahbowerswithwriting at gmail.com.